Good evening, everyone. It is really a pleasure and honor to be here in front of you today to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. And after all, it's just juice in a bottle. It's very simple, and it's, it's very easy for me to get excited about. So I just thank you for listening for the next 10 minutes about what it is that we do and why it is that we do it. So Heritage Link Brands, what exactly is the company that uh, in October of 2005, my husband and I founded. It today is the fastest growing importer and distributor of wines from indigenous producers in Africa. And it will be very easy to see why that is, why there's been this momentum. Because at the end of the day, when you go to the store and you decide to purchase a bottle of wine, there are a couple things that are driving what it is that you're purchasing. It could be, as Julie emphasized, the importance of brand and brand identity. Or it could be the way that a company is perceived through online marketing, as Jins had talked about the importance of that. But at the end of the day, it really is about the marketing of the story behind the wines. And our wines have a story that no other producer in the marketplace has today. And so it's pretty exciting to be able to share that again with you today. Okay, so what inspired this company to be founded? It was a very uh, serendipitous reading through the Sunday Times in Johannesburg in September of 05, where I saw an advertisement for the first annual Soweto Wine Festival. And as an American, the only knowledge I had about Soweto was apartheid and Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela going there to rally people to really get behind changing the times. So for me to read, in 05 that there was now a wine festival there. I thought, wow, a lot must have changed and I'm going there to check it out and see what's going on with the wine. And so while I was there, I happened to meet a brilliant woman named Vivian Kleinhans. And oh, by the way, as you'll notice, this industry, this wine industry, specifically as it pertains to the black economic empowerment movement within the wine industry is mainly driven by women. And the, the woman that I met had this amazing Pinotage Rosé. And she proceeded to tell me, oh no, we're struggling really to get distribution in South Africa, let alone even trying to penetrate the US market. And here are the reasons why. And she talked a little bit about a legacy that I hadn't thought about. I mean, you'd heard about apartheid growing up in America, but I didn't really think about it in the context of how it affects one's day to day and how some of the the pieces still are playing out today because things take time. And her story was so compelling, not because it was, a, oh, I feel sorry for this woman, but it was, wow, you've come a long way and your family has. And you know what, there are a lot of people in the States who would be very excited to hear what you're talking about because guess what? In the States, there is this real affinity for people pulling you know, themselves up by the bootstraps and making something of their lives. And so at that moment, I came home and I talked to my husband and I said, okay, we're gonna do this. And, and that's how it was born. And you know, it took some research before we came to market, which was actually this, this month is our year anniversary. We did extensive research in the market. What was the wine industry looking like in the US? And guess what? It is booming. So um, where many other industries that affect our GDP, as Teresa showed, are, you know, relatively speaking, growth is, you know, kind of, you know, inching up versus other countries. In the U.S., the wine industry is set to outpace France by 2010, or Italy by 2010, and France by 2014 to become the largest wine consumption market in the world. Number two, the growth is coming from, you know, women going to grocery stores and buying wine, and also millennials, people that are between the ages of 21 and 30 who really want to buy something. And guess what? These people are different because they buy things not just to buy, but they want to know the background and story, not just because they want a good story, but also because they want to know it's doing something to change the world. People are into you know whole foods, eating healthy. Women are making the decisions. There are women that are affecting this change on the ground in South Africa. And you know I could figure out a way to differentiate this from other products. So this was a no-brainer. And to use online media and marketing tools to be able to do that would help us innovate in a way that we knew current producers and current importers weren't doing in the States. So we went for it. Our model is very simple, and it's a very audacious goal. We want to make these wines household names in the US, and there's no reason why they can't be. 
So we went from doing a test market in February of 07 uh, to in April going into 27 markets because the demand and the buzz was that great for these wines. And like I said, I mean, it goes without saying that the wines had great stories, but the juice in the bottle is really, really good. We launched with Whole Foods. We're a national vendor for Whole Foods, and we thought from an equity perspective that was the perfect partner for us to come to market with. Um, and then our wines are also so good that they're featured on South African Airways, Delta Airlines, and a host of other airlines in the space. And then we do a couple of things on the direct-to-consumer side so that people know who we are and we can generate buzz that has, has helped us kind of move along nicely. So enough about heritage, because really the good thing about us as importers is no one ever has to know who we are. We want you to really be able to develop an affinity for our brands. And the wineries that you see up here, Women in Wine, which by the way, throughout the entire value chain, from the laborer on the farm all the way to the CEO, is nothing but women, and it's a woman cooperative, produced some really, really wonderful wine. Boland, it's a wine that was featured earlier. Hopefully, you had a chance to taste it. Koopmans Kloof is uh, one of the only fair trade wineries in all of South Africa, black or white. Um, Mahuti is a, a winery that I'll talk a little bit more about to you uh, on the last slide. But right now what I'd like to do is really showcase the Seven Sisters, a wine producer that I think not only has an amazing story, but they've been able to market themselves and their wines in a way that bar none has kind of had them lead the, lead the industry. Green the country, that's the call, and that anything is possible. They've managed to triumph in the face of hardship. This is where John and Dina Brutus raised their seven daughters and young son. Growing up in Patanoster meant the sea was their life. But then John Brutus was fired from the fishing company where he'd worked for 20 years, and his family was evicted from its home. Because we were eight kids, we couldn't stay all together at one place. I mean, this one family member could accommodate two kids, the other could accommodate maybe three, the other one, my mother and father, and maybe another kid or so. So at that time, it was difficult. Twice after their parents' death, the sisters applied for quotas to carry on their dad's legacy. Twice, they were turned down. In the midst of their struggle and heartache, this family managed to turn their lives around. Their story is one of perseverance and survival, and it's enough to inspire anyone to do the same. One day, fourth-born Vivian decided to try her hand at the wine industry. After much research and hard work, she managed to start her own company out of her own pocket. Today, Seven Sisters is sold in 27 states in America. Each wine is named after one of the sisters. It's a, wh a white, male-dominated industry, and for black women to get into the industry, it's very tough. We haven't got land, we haven't got vineyards. Um, we had to start our companies from being a virtual company. The sisters have big plans for Paternoster. My main aim with my company is to plow back into the community of Paternoster um, to help the, the matriculants, um, you know, after school get into education, maybe even get into the wine industry. A fund has been started by the sister's U.S. clients for the people of Paternoster. At the same time, the South African market has finally shown an interest, and it's hoped this extra boost will help them invest in the future generations of the fishing village. Abra Barbia, SABC News, Paternoster. So this just gives you a little, a little medley of what it is that um, people are saying about our wines. Here's just a snapshot of some other noteworthy media that the wines are getting. Uh, and this is already media that we've got set for 08 as we continue to grow brand awareness and help make these wines household names. And last but not least, how can all of you get involved? All of you can play a role either by um, being consumers or facilitating partnerships if you know of restaurants, no matter how small or large, that would be interested in our wines and other various places where wine is sold. Also, our, our vineyards and our wineries are looking for vino tourism project financing. A lot of them have put all of their resources into buying the land and now they're at the point where they could facilitate creating lodges and there's an opportunity for that. 
Um, working capital financing is always an opportunity for um, startup entrepreneurs in that space, especially since a lot of them are working with a base of really no legacy capital. And then last but not least, just buy our wines and encourage other people to do the same. Thank you.